Next on Startup, we head to St. Louis, Missouri to talk to Corey and Jason, two serial entrepreneurs who created Strange Donuts, a unique donut shop that's encouraging St. Louis residents to stay strange. Then we swing by Asheville, North Carolina to talk to Evan, a Chinese medical practitioner who started Silverleaf, an herbal pharmacy and acupuncture studio that encourages people to achieve a more natural, holistic lifestyle. All of this and more is next on Startup. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support Startup and those who dare to share their ideas with the world. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. I'm on Sutton Avenue in St. Louis, Missouri, and we're gonna go talk to Corey and Jason, the guys who created Strange Donuts. After several failed attempts at different business concepts, these self-proclaimed serial entrepreneurs finally found something that they could sink their teeth into. Let's go hear their story. The original name for the donut was Oily Cakes, and they were served to World War I soldiers to boost morale. Nowadays, Americans consume more than 10 billion donuts annually, with the donut industry estimated at $3.6 billion. Corey and Jason had independently tried several different small business concepts before deciding to give it their all with Strange Donuts. And given the popularity of their brand, it looks like this unique donut shop is here to stay. Let's start by telling us who you guys are as people. Uh, start with you. Sure, I'm Corey Smale, um, half of owner of Strange Donuts. Uh, I kind of handle the marketing and getting the word out about everything that we're doing, all the buzz and all the hype about the donuts and all the fun stuff. I'm Jason Bachman. I'm the other half of Strange Donuts, and I handle more like the back of the house stuff. Tell me about your, your history, like education, business. And Jason and I were both just kind of serial entrepreneurs. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd had a few businesses before, both of us. I've had some ones that didn't work. We both had some ones that didn't work. We've had some <laughs> ones that have worked. This one's working. Uh, College? Yeah, we actually met in college. Uh, we were in an international business club. I want to hear the whole story. Paint, paint the full picture for me, like uh, from the original idea, whose idea, the name, all the way to finding a space. Um, I had developed this blog called mm Donuts with five Ms.com. You so you've always it. been into donuts. Yeah, well, I use like what was like readily available technologies to kind of do my market testing. So we put the idea out there of strange donuts. Um, we wanted a name that kind of represented what it was off the bat. Yeah. We launched a Kickstarter campaign. We looked to raise 10,000. We raised just over 12 and a half. Oh, wow. Um, so we had a successful campaign. We were doing independent events once a month throughout the summer. We had one for National Donut Day. We had a beer tasting. We had various things throughout the community partnering with other local businesses to kind of support what they're doing and support what we're doing together. And that was all before a location? That was all before mm -hmm. we were open, yeah. We were doing a lot of just kind of like renegade stuff. I mean, we had over 7,000 Facebook fans before we opened. <laughs> We got to like the end of the summer and we're about month six or seven of not being open and people were like, what's up with the store not opening? Like, because we had a space, we just did, there was like, the windows were all covered up for months. Sure. I didn't know anything about building donut shops. I knew about building brands, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I went to Jason and I said, I need help. Like this business needs to get off the ground. So what'd you do at that point? You had this 
concept that had been proven, obviously a great idea, great branding, great marketing. Mm -hmm. Where did you step in? And I kind of backfilled like paperwork that hadn't been done yeah. and, and just things that'll shut you down before you start. Um, I got in here, got some contractors and and some people, unfortunately, because of Corey's you know kindness, um, had ran off with the money to build the shop <laughs> and uh, and weren't coming back. <laughs> and wow. so I, I personally and Corey personally, you know, we were in here swinging hammers at four in the morning, sure. all through the night, and um, we did what we could on the shoestring budget that we had. Take me back to opening day and tell that whole story. What was that like? Uh, it's madness. I mean, we stayed up all night for two days straight, it seems like, um, to get open. We opened at 6 a.m. I think there was people here starting at 3 or 4 in the morning. Um, the line was down the block. All the news was here. Everyone was here. It was just, it was a crazy thing. It was a spectacle. See, I've never seen anything like it, actually. How much actual money had been spent to open this place? What did it take? Around $100,000. Okay. So you got the 12 from Kickstarter. Where did the rest of the financing come from? There was a small business loan mm -hmm. um, for forty-five dollars to $50,000. The rest was, there was some events along the way and terms that I negotiated with, with contractors and, and nice. vendors. On the, I call it 12 banks. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the 13th bank, but at the same time, I was like, well, that's fine. I'm going to keep building this. We're going to yeah. keep building this brand. We're going to keep building this name. On the 13th bank, I called. I said, I had the pitch down, you know, I'm opening a donut store. By the end, she didn't let me finish. She goes, is it strange donuts? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I just read about you in St. Louis Magazine. But that was a huge hurdle to get over for sure. But you, you took a really cool angle and approach to it by creating like a level of uh, uh, mass popularity and really utilize your PR to make the bank even aware of who you were. Yeah, I mean, at this point, banks want to help us, you know, and yeah. we were fortunate enough to get it to that point. The largest donut ever made was an American style jelly donut weighing 1.7 tons, 16 feet in diameter and 16 inches high in the center. Seeking out you know, the, the partnership with Jason, I think that's another great point for people to take is that you cannot do everything yourself all the time. And people try to. I, I'm a strong proponent though that you don't need a partner unless they can do something you can't. Okay. You know, so I think people out of fear will try to partner up with people. Or insecurity in themselves. Yeah, and like trying to spread out the risk. And I, and I think that if something is successful, um, then you're thinking, man, I could have done this myself, and it leads a lot to a lot of the infighting. And if it's a failure, you know, it's easy to point the finger at other people and me. say, it wasn't me, it was it was Rick, you know, that whatever. <laughs> Rick, was... screw, Rick screwed something up. Dang it, it's Rick. It's always Rick. <laughs> but the uh, but no, you don't you don't take the ownership for your failure. And sure. I think that there's so much positivity in failure. Are you close to breaking even? Are you paying your loans? Is it making any money? I love this. So I'm kind of a spiritual dude. Before sure. we started out, I was like, you guys mind if we have like a little, if I like a little say a little prayer for the okay. business, right? And then yeah. I was like, I think that if we can make this much money this week, we'll be safe, mm -hmm. you know? And um, we made that, we hit that mark at 10 in the morning. Yeah, we opened it Just six. the one day. We opened at six, we crossed that mark at 10 in the morning and I could not believe it. My very first donut run. I think I'm a little uh, a little off here. But... Right. You look like a pro. Once they start getting like a golden brown, is like when you'll turn them. Okay. Yeah, you can hit them over there. How many donuts on average will you make in a session or a work day uh, or whatever? I think on the weekends it's, I think it's over like 2,000. Dip the donut in. Okay. I, I kind of let it hang there. And you watch it like slide down the side. So uh, you're passionate about baking now. <laughs> it's like, like, as they told me, like, like, like we want strange donuts. It's like, it's like, like, like practical strange donuts. Like, I at least want to make stuff that people will still like. Yeah. Be creative and, and odd, but yeah. The, uh, I don't know, it's, it's very just a fun, fun environment. Odd, yeah. Very fun and odd job. What is it like seeing the growth of a business like this happen in this short of a time frame? It's, it's insane. Is it really? It really is, yeah. Uh, so they've been open since October. So in eight months, there's a second location, there's a third location in the pipeline. Wow. Let's go through here and uh, I'm gonna try every one of these. I'm gonna try to take the smallest bite possible. So this is gooey butter. That guy's French toast. Uh, that's salted caramel. That's uh, Bart's Revenge, Fat Steve. Uh, that's the King Kong, blueberry cheesecake. 
Oh god. You tell me about I that. I shouldn't one. have tried that. How does that, that compare one. to other maple? Oh maple man, I don't want to say it, but it's better. Yes. I, I don't. I'm speechless right now. But I'm going back to the cheesecake when I'm going to ruin Excellent. lunch. Yeah, it's great, right? A man named Adolf Levitt, a refugee from Russia, invented the first donut machine in New York in the 1920s. You guys are regulars of Strange Donuts, I take it. No, first time. We just happened to be driving by this magical street, and <laughs> he had the great idea to come in here, and let's try this place we've heard nothing but great things about. The moment of truth. You got to try a donut. Here it goes. I'm gonna try the salted caramel one, which oh, is gooey. All right, ready? Here we go. Same go time. ahead. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> what oh do you God. think? <laughs> wow. The best donut I've ever had. So there we have it. Strange donuts. Best donut you've ever had. Mm -hmm. You you got this place. You found it on Craigslist, right? But now, are you? going to be leaving and expanding or are you just getting other locations you're adding to? We're just adding to the uh, locations. How do you maintain the integrity of your brand, your product, and expand? Because you can't be five places at once. We're investing in a cloning machine right now. Um, Absolutely. I've been looking into that myself. No, I mean, I honestly, it is it is us, but it's about to be beyond us. And it already is beyond us, you know? I mean, you know, it's people like Rocky and um, it's people like Marshall, you know, that are helping us manage this store here. I mean, the vibe is going to be the people of Strange Donuts. What advice do you guys have for other entrepreneurs out there? You know, there's enough room for everyone. I don't have to step on somebody to get my own. Be good to people. Mm -hmm. Know some very basic calculations and don't be afraid to fail. And I think that, that you know, the failure is, is really what sharpens your sword. You're doing what you're doing and you're passionate about it. People are going to see that. And if you're going at it, you know, going at it hard like that, they're going to help you and get you further, you know, and that's the success that we've seen. So that's cool. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Yes. Thank really you. Appreciate Thanks for coming it. out. Thank you. Thanks for letting us invade the Dome Zone. Yeah. yeah. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Corey and Jason do it? Let's find out. They started with roughly $5,000 in the bank and a 715 credit score. They spent roughly $110,000 to open the business, acquired through an SBA loan and a Kickstarter campaign. In the first year, the business was profitable. And the one word that they said they would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is tenacity. When Corey and Jason explained the idea of strange donuts to people, they probably had a glazed over look at them and thought they were nuts. And there's nothing crueler than that. Looks like these two donut CEOs just shot a hole in one. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for strange donuts. Crowdfunding, as people know it, is really important to launching new businesses. You're able to get promotion, get market validation, get extra marketing testing, but also you get all the data. So you move from a transaction to a relationship. Obviously you get the money too. So at Indiegogo, we actually have the most campaigns of anybody and the most data. So we actually have learned a lot. There's three things that matter to create a really great campaign. Number one, have a good pitch. Number two, be proactive. And number three, find an audience that cares. Next time on Startup, we head to Minneapolis, Minnesota to talk to Bob, a man of many careers who started Above the Falls, a kayak rental and tour company that takes people up the Mississippi River. Then we head over to Madison, Wisconsin to talk to Henry, Andrew, and Giotto, three college buddies who love beer and online technology and started Mobcraft, the world's first crowdsourced brewery. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. Another option for you. Okay. See, this might be a little bit more your color. This one fits perfect. Oh, it feels good too. Like it was made for you. I feel very free. What? So I know we're on opposite sides of the fence, but why do you always gotta balk about what you do, huh? American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The 
the Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Chevrolet. Find new roads. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support startups and those who dare to share their ideas with the world.